Welcome back. We'll be continuing our exploration and source criticism of the Islamic text uh, that we started in the video on Muhammad and Merkava mysticism. We're going to stick to the Quran here uh, with the account of Adam and Iblis. Now, this occurs in numerous places throughout the Quran, in part or in whole. Uh, here's a list of the pericopes in the Quran. You can uh, look up each one of those uh, cases and do a comparative study if you would like. Um, but in this video, we're going to compare what we see in this story to texts uh, that predate the Quran. So we'll be looking at three texts. Namely, I'll put them up on the screen for you. The first is the life of Adam and Eve. Uh, the original composition would be about 100 BC to 200 AD with later Greek and Latin texts added around the 5th century. The second text we'll look at is the Gospel of Bartholomew. That's about the 3rd century. And then the Book of the Cave of Treasures, which comes from about the 4th century. Now, it would be quite uh, tedious to do an exhaustive study here with all of the elements of the story that occur in various places throughout the Quran. So we're just going to look at five elements, and we're going to see how um, they exist in the Quran and then in the text that uh, predate the Quran. So let's go through a quick comparative study. The first element um, of the story of Adam and Iblis that we'll look at is the command to bow down to Adam. From Surah 2 and Surah 18, you see the command there. We said to the angels, bow down to Adam, and again in Surah 18. Now, it's not stated explicitly here in the book of the Cave of Treasures, but it's implied because you have the voice of God saying unto him, Adam, behold, I have made thee king, priest, and prophet, and lord, and head, etc. And so God uh, gives Adam quite an exalted status here, at which point uh, the angels bow the knee. Now, the command to worship is more explicitly stated in the life of Adam and Eve. Michael brought you and made us worship you in the sight of God. This is repeated later in the life of Adam and Eve in uh, chapter 14. Michael went out and called all the angels, saying, Worship the image of the Lord God as the Lord God has instructed. And we can add in here as well the Gospel of Bartholomew. Michael said, Worship thou the image of God. So the common element here of the command uh, you know, to bow down or to worship Adam exists in the Quran as well as these three earlier texts. The second element that we'll look at is uh, where the angels actually bow down uh, or worship Adam in Surah 15. So the angels prostrated themselves, and in Surah 20, we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves to Adam, they prostrated themselves. From the book of the Cave of Treasures, when the angels heard this speech, they all bowed the knee and worshipped him. From the life of Adam and Eve, and Michael himself worshipped first. So the angels worship. This is, again, another common element. Satan refuses in Surah 7, not so Iblis. He refused to be of those who prostrate. And Surah 17, they bowed down except Iblis. And once again, this is a common element in the book of the Cave of Treasures. God said to him, Come thou also, for thou shalt worship my image and likeness. Satan refused to do so. From the life of Adam and Eve, Satan answered, I do not worship Adam. And once again, from the Gospel of Bartholomew, Satan said, I am of fire. I was the first angel formed and shall worship clay and matter. So Satan refuses to worship in all of these accounts as well. The next common element, Satan criticizes man as inferior. From Surah 38, I am better than he, thou creates me from fire, and him thou creates from clay. Surah 15, I am not one to prostrate myself to man, whom thou didst create from sounding clay, from mud molded into shape. This is true as well in the book of the Cave of Treasures. It is meet that he should worship me, for I existed before he came into being. From the life of Adam and Eve, why do you compel me? I will not worship one inferior and subsequent to me. I am prior to him in creation before he was made. I was already made. He ought to worship me. And we quoted this previously from the Gospel of Bartholomew. In Satan's refusal, he uh, proclaims that he is superior uh, because he was formed from fire. The next common element we'll look at is the expulsion of Satan. This occurs in Surah 7. Get thee down from this. It is not for thee to be arrogant. Here, get out. Thou art the meanest of creatures. And again in Surah 38, Satan is expelled. This occurs as well in the book of the Cave of Treasures. Hurl him down from heaven to earth. And we have this as well in the life of Adam and Eve. We were expelled into this world from our dwellings and have been cast onto the earth. From the Gospel of Bartholomew, Then was God wroth with me and cast me down, having commanded the windows of heaven uh, to be opened. 
So the common elements that we've explored here between the Quran and pre-existing texts. First, the command to bow down to Adam. The angels then bow down. Third, Satan criticizes man as inferior. Fourth, Satan refuses to worship. And then finally, Satan is expelled. So this brings up a number of questions. For example, the Quran claims to affirm what came before it, i.e. the Torah and the Gospel. From Surah 3, we see that quite clearly. Then in Surah 5 as well, confirming that which was revealed before him in the Torah, and we bestowed on him the Gospel. But the problem is that these books are nowhere near the Torah and the Gospel. Um, that's quite clear from both their composition as well as their theology. Now all of this raises some questions. There are a number of differences in these accounts. For example, Allah cannot quote Iblis consistently. Okay, Did Iblis say this, I am better than he, thou creates me from fire, and him thou creates from clay? Or did Iblis say this, I am not one to prostrate myself to man whom thou didst create from sounding clay from mud molded into shape? Which one did Iblis say? Why can't Allah quote the characters in the story correctly? Further, why can't Allah quote himself correctly? Did he say, as in Surah 7, Get thee down from this, it is not for thee to be arrogant. Here, get out, for thou art the meanest of creatures. Or did he say, Then get thee out from here, for thou art rejected, accursed, and the curse shall be on thee till the day of judgment. Which is it? Why can't Allah quote himself consistently? Further, in Surah 38, 7 and 15, Did Allah say this, O Iblis, what prevents thee from prostrating, etc.? Or did he say, What prevents thee from prostrating when I commanded thee? Or did he say, What is your reason for not being among those who prostrated themselves? So it's puzzling why Allah can't quote himself consistently, uh, nor can he quote consistently the characters in the story. It also raises questions about inspiration. When you open Sahih al-Bukhari, Book 1, the Book of Revelation, we see the types of physical and psychological changes that Muhammad allegedly underwent as he was receiving his revelation. Sometimes it's revealed like the ringing of a bell. Uh, on a cold day, sweat dropping from his forehead, according to Aisha. Allah's Messenger used to bear the revelation with great trouble and used to move his lips quickly with inspiration. So the question that this raises is, why did Muhammad have to undergo these types of physical and psychological changes to receive information that already existed? If you were literate, perhaps you had access to the text and you could read the text. If you were illiterate, you could hear these traditions being circulated in oral form. This is how the normal person would receive this type of information. But Muhammad has to, has to bear the heavy burden of these revelations with sweat and the ringing of a bell and these trance-like states to receive information that already existed. It's very strange. Further, just we have to ask, what is the Quran? Is it the word of Allah? Or from the previous video on Merkava mysticism, is it the word of the Mishnah? Two Enoch, three Enoch, Testament of Solomon, Apocalypse of Abraham, the Book of Jubilees. From this video, is the Quran the word of the life of Adam and Eve, the Book of the Cave of Treasures, or the Gospel of Bartholomew? What exactly is the Quran? These are questions I would like uh, Muslims to answer. I'll be looking for your answers in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have you ever wondered why there are so many a hadith which testify to Muhammad's engraved ring? Have you ever wondered why in the Quran it's said that Solomon was given the power to control the wind? Have you ever wondered why Muhammad thought that some dogs were the shaitan? And after you're finished laughing at the story where a rock runs off with Moses' clothes, have you ever wondered what the source for that story is? Have you ever wondered why the story of Adam and Iblis in the Quran sounds so much like pre-existing legend? We'll be looking at possible answers to these questions and more as we continue a source-critical journey into the primary texts of Islam and the connections between them and tales of mysticism, memoirs of magic, and the folklore of antiquity. I hope you'll join us on my channel for what will no doubt continue to be a fascinating journey through the tales of the ancients.